is the Selenko Hyper-G Round. Initially, when I heard that Selenko was tripping out the sides with their most popular, by far most popular tennis string, I was thinking that this is a really, really bad idea. After all, one of the top reasons that the Hyper-G is so popular among all tennis players, not just the hard-hitting juniors, is the massive topspin potential from the four edges. In fact, I love this string so much that this is the first tennis string review on this channel I actually did. I'll leave a link to that cringe-worthy string review in this corner if you haven't checked it out already. So, is the Hyper-G round a complete waste of time or is it a risk well rewarded? Let's find out after you hit that like, subscribe, and that notification bell for more original tennis content. Just as a small aside, stringing this up was much, much easier on the hands and fingers, especially on the crosses. But on the tennis court, this is actually requiring no break-in period, unlike the Hyper-G, which does require about a 45 minute break-in period. More on the tension drop later in this video. Surprisingly, the string gave ample spin potential from the baseline. I especially like taking the ball at a higher strike zone, specifically around shoulder height, which is a normal strike zone for you guys, because keep in mind, I'm five foot one, and hit through the ball in a horizontal swing path. Yes, even though I said horizontal, I still got a good amount of spin potential from the string. As for the backhand ground stroke, I got great topspin action and dip from the topspin drive for both down the line and cross court. And a little nice touch is that for those of you with more flexible rackets, you can really feel the snapback of this tennis string on almost every stringle, shingle, every single topspin ground stroke that you hit. Also, this string is fantastic for flattening out shots, not really surprised given its rounded nature. The volleys were decent, but there is one negative I'll talk about later in this video. As for serves, this was a good string for flat serves, and for a round string, I got some nice kick actually. But the shiny attribute of this string is the slice serves. I don't know if it's the firm feeling or the material or whatever, but this is the best tennis string. Yes, the best tennis string for slice serves I've play tested with so far. Not only can I make the ball dance with side spin on both the out wide deuce and up the T add, but I have it land short as well at will. Check out some of these points. Keep in mind, all these points were played on a fast, dusty, slick surface. Now, imagine the action I can get if I was in a proper indoor hard court. Am I right, Elite Sports Club? Now, let's talk about the negatives. After today's sponsor, me. If you guys like video games, check me out on twitch.tv slash mark underscore sunset. Right now, a good friend and I, who also plays tennis, are playing Baldur's Gate 3. So if you guys have any questions on tennis or anything else, hop on and enjoy the gaslighting we do, not only to our enemies and our companions, but to each other. Sorry. First and foremost, the launch angle for the string is way too high, even for a very tight string pattern of a racket like I have. Coupled with the fact that the spin potential is really only unlocked if you swing through the ball, a lot of my more unconfident strokes went like five feet past the baseline on the bounce. Other rounded strings typically don't have this type of launch angle or control issue. Also, at the net, the strings were slightly overpowered. A lot of the short angle volleys will sail deeper than expected to hit wide. Also, the tension felt like it absolutely dropped after three hours of hitting. In fact, let's take a look at the tension via DT with the ERT 300 after five hours of hitting for good measure. So ERT 300 is saying that I have a 28 DT right now. And originally strong at 47 pounds. is now at 28 DT, which equates to 41 pounds. So again, a little bit of a drop off, but nothing, nothing super drastic. Overall, I really think this is a risk well taken by Selengo, but keep in mind that this is not like the original Hyper-G at all. Well, what do you guys think? Did I hit the nail on the head or did I completely miss it? Leave a comment down in the section below or better yet, join my Discord to join in on the conversation. This was play tested for over five hours of straight hitting and it was strung at 47 pounds on my Head Gravity Pro 2023. 
and this was tested at the 16 gauge thickness. And as always guys, happy hitting.